In today's news for you, colon cancer, the latest lessons doctors want you to know. Dr. Marge Seabrook is a gastroenterologist with uh, consultants in gastroenterology. Did you have to pick such a big word <laughs> for your title? But uh, we want to talk to you about a new report that just came out yesterday in talking about the necessity for these screenings and how, how it's working. Really good news on the colon cancer front, Dondi. Over the last decade, the incidence, uh, the number of cases diagnosed, and as well as the deaths, have, we've reduced it by about 30% over the last decade. And we think that's mostly because of preventative measures taking out polyps before they turn into cancer. There's a, and there's also a big push nationally. There's a group called the National Colorectal Cancer Roundtable uh, that is promoting uh, by the year 2018 that we get 80% of the appropriate Americans screened for this disease. And those Americans would be which groups? The biggest risk group is, is your, the number of candles on your birthday cake. Over the age of 50 is when we recommend everybody be screened for this disease, some organizations recommend that African Americans who are at increased risk be screened as early as 45. And you know, I, I feel like we talk about this to the point that it becomes monotonous, but it really is necessary to emphasize that if you do go ahead with the screening, any polyp that you would find would be huge in being able to get it out and, and make a survival rate of 100%. That's right. Our, our emphasis is on prevention, mm -hmm. not detection of cancer, not cure of cancer. Unlike breast cancer or prostate mm -hmm. cancer, our goals with those cancers is to detect them early enough to cure them. Our goal with colon cancer is to actually prevent it. I find on Groupon and so many different other coupon places, they offer colon cleanses for a special price and all that. But your emphasis would be more on focusing on the basics. I think people look for like the fix and a quick pill kind of thing, but yet eating, exercise, eating the right foods specifically, right? Right. The other risk factors that we're finding include uh, people who are obese, uh, people who have high fat diets, low fiber diets, those also increase your risk. Uh, some people will say that uh, low calcium uh, or not enough calcium may actually increase your risk, even vitamin D. So it kind of gets back to good health habits of diet and exercise when we're talking about digestive health as well. Well, we have some questions coming in from our viewers. We're going to ask you in a few minutes on the show as well. But if you'd like to ask Dr. Seabrook any of your colon health questions, go right now to Twitter and send me a tweet. I'm at Dawn DWASTV. The doctor will answer your questions a little later in the show. Right now, an update on your forecast. Doctor, thank you very much, but don't go away because we'll be back with you in a moment.